Hey folks, Rob Avis here. Today we're going to be talking to Jen Briere, who has just come through the Advanced Passive Solar Greenhouse Design course and has designed a passive solar greenhouse. And so at the end of the course, we do a conversation with our students, a short conversation to help give some feedback around their greenhouse so that they can uh, build their greenhouse with success. And so today we're going to look at her design and give her some pointers to improve upon it so that when she goes to build it, it is going to be an incredible success. Hey Jen, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you, Rob? Yeah, how'd you find the course? It was fantastic. It was a, a great little uh, starter to anyone who wants to get to know how to build a passive solar greenhouse. Um, it was very technical, which was great. Um, I like that uh, type of information, and uh, you covered more topics than I could have imagined to have covered, so it was great. Awesome. Okay, well, let's uh, take a look through your greenhouse. Why don't you give me a quick tour, and then I know you had some specific questions that you wanted to talk about, and then we can... Uh, um, give you some pointers on how to improve on the design. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my greenhouse, um, I'm just starting with this very small greenhouse. I wanted to get under 100 square feet um, so that I could eliminate the need for a uh, building permit. Mm -hmm. um, and also I think for uh, implementing these in small residential backyards, 100 square feet is more ideal and would be more widely um, uh, installed than you know a much larger greenhouse so that's what I've started with um, just a very basic um, silhouette just a very basic frame um, following exactly the steps that you that you took us through in the course um, I have uh, full glazing um, on the front with some venting windows here on the front a one foot of um, vent glazing with the uh, rear glazing on the back here, a two foot high upper vent glazing. Um, and then my horizontal vents, I've got just a small one by two window um, on the west side and a two by two window where the door is located on the east side. Um, per your recommendations also, I thought it was a great idea to add in a blowout door in case I need to get in large equipment, large amounts of soil, anything that is bigger than a standard door having that blowout door, which is solid, um, not glazed, but having that ability um, five by four, I felt would be really, um, really helpful, so. Fantastic. Okay. That's the, uh, the general uh, cover of it, yeah. Okay, so um, I really like the design. There's a couple of things that you're gonna need to think about. Um, the, the rear roof, and because this is just silhouette, we don't have a lot of details here yet. Um, you'll want to think a little bit about how you're going to manage water on the front and on the back of um, of the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And so one way that you can keep that roof line, if that's something that you want to keep, is by extending the roof out a little bit so that you've got a bit of a, a drip edge there where the, the two surfaces meet. Or you could flash it as well, that's possible. Um, another approach, is there a reason that you chose a gable style roof there as opposed to just a simple shed roof? Um, I think you know, I was just playing around with the proportions of the height, and mm -hmm. I think when I got just to a shed roof, it was either going to be too low when you're inside, mm -hmm. or to go right vertically, like vertical and meet with the angled shed portion of the glazing, mm -hmm. it was going to be incredibly tall. So it was just a means to, to lower it or to, to both gain height inside, but also lower the overall height. Okay. But I'm not opposed to a, a shed roof in any way. So one way that you can simplify that is to increase the height of the knee wall in the front and then to get um, higher on the front end so that like typically what I, I like to think about is how do I get my knee wall on the front to be as high as you know my head or the person that's going to be using it so they're not banging their head and then run your glazing backwards towards your back wall um, you know, 412 or 612, depending on what your height restrictions are in the area. Yeah. Um, and then it's just a much simpler and inexpensive um, shed or roof line, I should say, than, than trying to create um, a gable roof like this. So that'll probably save you a little bit of money. Okay. Um, and that's where those, those horse shelters um, can be really effective. So if, if anybody has horse shelters out there or builds horse shelters, yeah. um, a horse shelter manufacturer, again, coming back to kind of where your business is going, um, it would be a great group of people to collaborate with in terms of um, building these for you if you're going to actually plant these into people's backyards. 
Sure. Um, so I think the proportions are great. Um, you might just want to explore simplifying your roof line a little bit. And so then by doing that, your vent will actually move onto the back wall mm -hmm. as opposed to on the roof. And so now you don't have a perforation in your, your rear roof, which is going to, again, help with your water management. Right. Um, and you'll also be able to expand the front um, a vent as well so you can get more air on on the bottom um, and you'll have a really great ventilation system so you'll have the back vent on the vertical wall and the front vent on the vertical wall the um, the back glazing if it isn't ending up on the vertical wall can just be they don't have to be windows if you don't want you can have them as you can make your own uh, vent panels that are insulated mm -hmm. so that they're losing less energy um, the blowout door is fantastic. I think that's great. You should have that in, in all of your designs and same with the door. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, I think, I think this, like this overall concept that you've presented, which is essentially building, uh, greenhouses that don't need building permits is ostensibly just sheds is a fantastic mm -hmm. idea. And, um, you know, with all the new legislation in Canada around, uh, medicinal marijuana and people wanting to start taking a little bit more control over their food. Um, having the ability to mass manufacture sheds essentially that have some passive solar greenhouse features in it, I think is a great idea. Hmm. Well, thanks. Um, did you have any other sheets on here that you wanted to, to share? So I had, um, there are just some elevations here that kind of show different angles yep. and the, the venting. Yep. Um, just some general information here on the greenhouse itself that, you know, you can't really understand if you're just looking at the, um, at the uh, drawings themselves. Um, so some more information on the foundation. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the best option for that. Um, our frost line depth up here is about six feet. Um, so for such a small residential use greenhouse, I didn't want to be building extremely deep foundations. So I kind of, I went with the shallow insulated foundation mm -hmm. um, using horizontal rigid foam insulation. Um, the options between ICF, cinder block, and rubble trench but all seemed op like valid options for this. Mm -hmm. um, and having no specific um, construction experience myself, I didn't have a preferred method. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wanted to go with cedar frame just because that will that's readily available here. Um, most trades work with that. They can go up very quickly, very easily. Um, and uh for and will be lo far less expensive than you know a metal frame right. and um will reduce the risk of mold in the, right. in the greenhouse as well awesome that's great okay um and did you did you finish your energy sheet i'd love to see how much energy yes. you think that greenhouse is going to consume more or less um i probably need to do some adjusting a bit but this is kind of like the first stab at it yet okay so you've got your heat loss is 6,235 BTUs per hour. That's great. Um, and I bet you, um, I think it's really always really interesting to see all the, the heat get, that gets lost out of the glazing. Um, yeah. So half of that is at 3,418 BTUs per hour um, is coming out of the, the glazing. Mm -hmm. um, and so by designing um, an inexpensive kind of add-on thermal curtain system, I bet you can cut that 3,400 BTUs down in half, which will take your heat loss down to probably around 4,000 BTUs, um, you know, four to 5,000 BTUs, which is pretty awesome. Especially mm -hmm. if you take out those back vent windows and you replace those with plugs, um, you'll be able to dramatically reduce the, the heat loss in this greenhouse. And so now That's it's, true. it's quite, um, reasonable for somebody to, to heat this or just to, to use it for three seasons, depending on what their, their goals are. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, that, that's a really great design. I, um, I'd love to um, see what you end up with if you change that silhouette just around a little bit. And um, yeah, if you have any other questions, make sure you get in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Do you have any closing thoughts or comments? Um, let me just go back up to the, the drawing here. Um, yeah, if so, the um, if I were to change this silhouette to mm -hmm. just a simple shed, in the document itself, when I'm filling it out, it asks for number of roofs. With that type yep. of silhouette, do I now have zero roofs? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so put zero roofs into the energy model, and then you have one 
uh, well, you te technically have uh, two, uh, you're going to have three, one, two, three, you're going to have a, uh, south, east, and west glazing surfaces. So you have three glazing surfaces, and you can include the um, the main glazing surface with the glazing in the the vent panels on the front as well. Oh yeah, they don't have to be separate, like no. two different south. I mean, wall? It, the model won't care, but you can okay. you can add them as long as the material is the same. If the, if you're going to use different materials for the vent uh, windows that you will for the um, for the main glazing surface, then you should do separate. Um, separate panels essentially within the model. Um, yeah. So it depends on the material that you use. So probably best practices is to separate it out just in the event that you want to change those windows. Um, right. One other thing too with the with the west window there is I'd go a little bit bigger with that. Um, okay. it, it, like bigger is better when it comes especially to cross ventilation. Mm -hmm. Okay sure. Yeah. Yeah um, it was a, this balance in my uh, region where it's very cold, very cloudy. So, you know, in such a small greenhouse, I was worried that I know you say you can't overventilate, but adding so much glazing, I just didn't know if I was going to lose a tremendous amount of heat. But, but, uh, so for those windows, you could use a slider because in the summer, you'll probably just keep the slider or the hopper open. Um, mm -hmm. and then you can put a foam plug in in the wintertime when you're not getting a yeah. huge benefit, um, from the ventilation. So there's ways that you can increase the R value in those windows in the winter time because they're not going to provide a lot of light. Right. Um, and so then you get the benefit. And again, you could probably remove the, that vent on the West side doesn't need to be a window either. It could just be a piece of plywood with some siding on the outside of it, something light or painted mm -hmm. with foam behind it on hinges. Um, right. And it could even be not hinged. You can just literally remove it in the summertime because all summer long, it doesn't need to be in there. And so it's a seasonal kind of plug, essentially, if you want to make it really simple. Right. Um, and then that just gets stored somewhere on a, on a hook inside the greenhouse. And then when the season changes sufficiently enough that you want to plug it off, you just put the plug back in and make it really how do, expensive. How is that entered into the, the sheet? When is it considered a glazing surface if it's just open? And it's a, a hole with nothing in it? Well, so the, the sheet, all the sheet's trying to do is calculate heat loss. And so mm -hmm. if the plug was built properly, then you would just not have a glazing surface on the, on the west side. Because you're basically imagining that in the, so what the, what the sheet's trying to do is trying to figure out your peak heat loss and your annual fuel consumption. Mm -hmm. And so that plug, in my mind, would be removed as soon as the heating season's gone. So we don't yeah. have to worry about it in terms of the, the model. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. That sounds good. Okay. Thanks, Jen. So if folks are interested in learning more about the Passive Solar Greenhouse Design course, I'll leave a link to the show notes below. We also have a free 30-minute introduction to Passive Solar Greenhouse Design, which you can take, and I'll put that link in the show notes below as well. If you found this video useful, uh, please give us a like and uh, say, uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified when we put additional videos like this onto our channel. Thanks so much, guys. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.